and how you're planning on recording this session and uh, just basically summarize what, what's going on, Ben. Sure. So first of all, let me introduce my alt, and that's, um, let me get on the other computer here. So that's me. Okay, this is my alt avatar, HBX Beerbaum. And I've logged this avatar in on my other computer, and uh, I'm recording using Wiretap Pro. So it just records an MP3. So hopefully we'll have something successful this time. Well, thanks very much indeed for doing that. And I just want to check that everyone present here is okay with us recording this session. As I said on my email to you all from the Extension website earlier on today, I'm really hoping to write this up uh, just as an example of how you could potentially teach in Second Life and then have it published in one of the online journals. Um, and obviously the beauty of the online publishing is that we can publish some video clips to demonstrate various uh, parts of what we're doing. And so uh, that's the reason for, um, for Ben recording tonight. That's great. You've all got access to, again, which is information that we can potentially use for a publication. So uh, if anybody doesn't agree, I guess, to us doing this, and I know that it's difficult for me to, to sort of suggest that you, you, you won't agree, um, but if you don't agree, please say now. <laughs> and there's no problem. I can cut you out and take your voice out, so no worries. Just let, let us know, either now or during the session. Oh, I'm and glad I got the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're very smart. <laughs> um, and then obviously, uh, as I said on the, on the email, um, I was planning on working out just a fairly brief questionnaire um, with, um, uh, w you know, and I'd be interested for any of you to, who, who might like to send me some questions, we could actually almost create a group questionnaire and then just uh, see uh, really how people have found the experience. But there are a few questionnaires that have been used about Second Life experiences now. Um, that I can, uh, I guess, uh, you know, cut and paste from. And then what I'm going to do is just give a question out of a group and, and get your overall experiences of, of um, you know, what it's been like uh, having this particular part of the course. Okay, well, it looks like everybody's okay. Um, can I just ask a, a couple of you, um, for examples, just to sort of jump in and tell us, you know, some of the things that you've you've done in Second Life or how you found it, really just so that we can use you potentially as an example of a, of a student just talking about uh, what's happened because you've all had an incredibly rapid introduction and, and learning curve over the last couple of weeks. Most people don't get to the level of, of use of Second Life that you've got to so quickly and I'd really appreciate just getting your thoughts. What about you Eliza? You've got the best hairstyle. Um, actually, I spent quite a bit of time getting used to moving my avatar around and understanding uh, the sites, but now I feel much more comfortable um, and, you know, actually felt bold enough to go out and shop. Um, besides visiting the educational sites we were supposed to be at, I, I find it very exciting. I've talked a, a lot about this to a lot of people at the hospital, um, just co-workers, but I do uh, have a... Uh, a meeting with the CEO, it's it's uh, something they send employees to and, and intend to ask uh, where we're going to be with um, internet in the patient. So, What's been the reaction of your co-workers to you attending a course in this sort of environment? Actually, uh, interesting conversation yesterday. They were comparing it to uh, some classes that uh, um, the teachers had been taking and they said it was a very difficult um, program for them to participate in and I find this a wonderful working environment for me. I can um, uh, do the work when I, I'm able to and I'm really excited about Second Life because I feel like if we were meeting periodically um, we would kind of get to know each other um, a little better. Um, I enjoyed the interactions with the
classmates in um, the intro class, but still felt um, a little bit on the outside perhaps because uh, I live in the middle of the country. Um, these are students um, much more comfortable in this environment than I am. I'm a pretty traditional learner. So. What about you, Muhammad? I can see that you've got your uh, volume turned up. Yeah, so it was very exciting. I was really surprised to see uh, to see a real life simulation, like uh, participating in the class and then coordinating, communicating with the classmates. And it really felt like real environment, like feeling I'm not taking the class online, but I'm really in the class and communicating with the classmates and visiting different places, visiting different islands. And this is really fantastic for me. And and I, I like to think more about it and see where uh, this thing can take us, like more advanced level. And I'm fairly new to this and still I'm learning, but I found out it has a great potential to deliver communication, education, and also a great learning experience. Certainly one of the things I've been thinking of doing, and in fact, Ben, you really um, sort of pushed me in this direction, was literally trying to set up a conference center for the course um, on the island. I mean, I think you, you've done here an amazing start. Marty, maybe we should uh, talk to uh, Matthew about that and see what we can do. Okay, well, look, I think let's get on because we've still got a few things to do. So, James, we want to watch you be the star performer and uh, do another quick build, if you don't mind. And then uh, Ben's going to take us to a few more sites. Um, and as I said before, this is planned to be a session that will finish about 8 o'clock, unless, of course, obviously, people want to stay on longer. So, so James, can I hand it over to you? Certainly. Um, so, let's see. Why don't I show you how I usually put together um, simple buildings? Um, this is something that I did with Peter uh, a few years back, making the virtual hallucinations uh, simulation. Which um, did you guys get a chance to see that? It's a little hospital clinic. You walk through it. Posters change their um, appearance. You hear auditory hallucinations, that sort of thing. Yes, last week we all went through. Yes, indeed. All right, well, let me show you um, a little bit about how the, the building construction works. Uh, so, let's all walk around behind. Now, the big question is, can we all hear each other here? Because the only problem is that James has to be relatively <laughs> close. James has to That's be reasonably right. close for VOIP to work. Yeah, I think um, if you can't hear me, walk a little closer. All right, so buildings. Um, one thing that I found useful in, in building um, simulations of, of real-world buildings um, is to to start with uh, basically start with the floor. Um, and if you're building something completely new, um, this is just to give yourself a flat a flat area to work. Um, when you drop new objects into the second line system, it tries to line them up with existing objects that it finds under your cursor. So. If you have an, an uneven ground surface, um, it'll it'll be a little bit more challenging to get the bottoms of things to line up. Um, one thing that, that I found in, in working on this software and watching um, many people use it is that you know we all want to believe that human beings are capable of navigating in a three-dimensional environment. Um, we're really not. You know, our visual system is, is optimized for um, you know two eyes roughly five and a half feet above a, a flat surface and so it's very easy to get things um, built that look correct from from one perspective um, and are, are completely wrong when you look at them from another angle 